Ja, og tusind tak for invitationen, og øh, i programmets ånd vil jeg så øh, holde min tale på engelsk. Um, and I apologize for being late, but uh, now we have a political agreement on a new teacher's education in Denmark, and in the current Danish political climate, when you have the opposition in a negotiation room, you have to keep him there until the deal is struck, so uh, I apologize for being uh, delayed, but now we have an agreement. I would like to wish the Danish Academy of Technical Sciences congratulations on its 75th anniversary. It is a significant anniversary that we're celebrating. 75 years ago, the world looked a lot different than today. Denmark was embracing industrialization. The infrastructure was being developed and the Little Belt Bridge was inaugurated just two years earlier, creating the first connection between Jutland and Funen. The telephone had been widespread throughout the country, though still reserved for, for the few. Individual forms of production were gradually replaced by large-scale mass production and the increased use of machinery. There were still more horses than tractors used in agriculture. But there were a lot of horsepower behind the ever-accelerating industrialization in Denmark. Industrialization required new education, especially within technical fields. And national school reforms made it easier for the growing middle class to attend higher education. I believe that we today face another change, a transformation on par with industrialization. We're leaving behind the logic and mentality of the industrial age to transform ourselves into what, for the lack of a better term, could be called an innovation society, where natural resources were crucial to the industrial age Creativity and knowledge are key contributing factors in the innovation society. And just as it was in the past, a boost in education is crucial to the transformation. We must prepare ourselves as individuals in a constantly changing society. A changing society where our most important resource is brain power, and thereby a society where we can never be too educated. Today, You cannot open a paper or watch the news without being reminded again and again that Europe is in a crisis. Productivity is dropping, growth is low, our population is aging. And we face global competition from countries that have lower production costs and higher growth. But great challenges also offer great opportunities. Because it's the future challenges that will drive future innovation. And that's where we can find growth. Challenges, therefore, also provide part of the solution. But solutions to these challenges cannot just be handed over by politicians or the government. The solutions must be created. Created on a foundation of high-quality education, excellent research, and strong innovation. We cannot and will not compete against low salaries and bad working conditions, but the global challenges gives us the opportunity to do well by doing good. If we are to provide for Denmark's future, we need to transform our society on a fundamental level. To successfully transform from an industrial society to an innovation society, we face three must-win battles. Firstly, we need a historic boost in education and qualifications. The government's 2020 economic outlook has shown how we can fund this. In 2020, we will ensure that 60% of all young people will get a higher education and 25% will obtain a university degree. The jobs lost during the current crisis were primarily unskilled jobs. The jobs we create in the future will require, will require qualifications. This reminds me of one of my favorite stories. Not that long ago, I visited a leading Danish medical technical firm which has fully automated production operated by only two employees in the factory. One of the workers remembered the mantra from her childhood, pay attention in school or you'll end up in the factory. She now tells her children, pay attention in school or you won't be able to get a job at the factory. Some fear that we are over-educating people. But let me say this, we can never be too educated. We need to educate even more We need more talent and more creativity, and that's our first must-win battle. 
The second must-win battle concerns research. From day one, the government has maintained that the target of spending 1% of GDP on research should not be a boundary, but a baseline. We must create even stronger research environments where excellent research can benefit us all and create the foundation for new innovation. The government will also prioritize university basic research funding. We must ignore the myth that basic research does not lead to innovation. 16% of patents that resulted from publicly financed research were obtained by our basic research centers, which has only received 2% of the funding. So 16% of the patents from 2% of the funding, and that's from our basic research centers. It's essential to ensure that knowledge is recognized and utilized to create new solutions and added value. And I know that ATV is also very concerned about this. We need to better, be better at helping knowledge from our universities and research institutions pass through what has been called the valley of death. The valley of death is a chasm between our ability to create new knowledge and our ability to translate that knowledge to products, services and growth. We need a shorter path between public investment in research and education to growth and job creation. Universities need to enter strategic alliances with businesses with excellent research as a starting point. We need to build a bridge over the valley of death, and that's our second must-win battle. The third must-win battle on the path to an innovation society concerns our innovation capacity in itself. Three months ago, I launched an intensive process that will lead to Denmark's first collective and ambitious innovation strategy later this year. The basis for the strategy includes the grand societal challenges we face within health, climate, energy, environment, and so on. The innovation strategy will utilize Denmark's tradition of interdisciplinary thinking. It will improve our ability to find solutions to societal challenges and create globally competitive jobs and companies. Denmark must be a nation of solutions, and the innovation strategy will be an expression of a liberation from existing barriers and conventional thinking. We need to create a new culture of cooperation between the public and private sectors, and the government will bring properly, the public sector into play to accelerate the development of new solutions and jobs. This will be through a new model for cross-disciplinary partnerships, which are targeted at specific innovation challenges. An innovation society needs large-scale innovation. And it requires that we set ambitious targets for the transformation that our efforts will lead to. We need new solutions that reflect reality. We can develop our drive and use the fact that we are a well-organized society that should be able to commit to being an innovation society as our situation demands. Research is an important element in the innovation strategy. So is education. It's my ambition to improve the education system to meet future challenges. And this requires innovative education programs, a focus on career guidance, and a change of mindset among students and educators. Students shouldn't just be listening to lectures and submitting exam papers. Thoughts and ideas must be transformed to new products, processes, and even companies. Students must create change, be enterprising, and be able to see through an idea to its development. Creativity and ingenuity are vital if Denmark is to be a leading innovation society. Take Lego, for example. There's an average of 75 Lego bricks per person on this planet. And it's not because they're produced in Billund, but because the company consistently works creative, uh, creatively to innovate its products. There are a lot, I have a daughter of three years, who has a three years uh, birthday today, and I can assure you, there are a lot of plastic building bricks available. <clears throat> Often, they're much cheaper than Lego, but the kids want Lego because they want to be a part of the Lego creative universe. No creativity, no Lego. So our third win battle, must win battle, is to increase our innovation capacity and motivate more young people to be creative, enterprising, and daring. Let me conclude by thanking the Danish Academy of Technical Sciences for your persistent and qualified contribution to the development of Denmark. 
You have been with us from the time when telephones were a rarity, since we only had one bridge over the little belt, and since there were more horses than tractors in Danish agriculture. You've been with us since industrialization changed the Danish society, and you're still here. ATV is no less important nowadays when we face yet another transformation on par with industrialization. One of the founders of the academy, Professor P.O. Pedersen, was very explicit when he explained the reason for establishment of the academy. And I quote, Denmark has only one factor that we have the opportunity to improve, our skills. This argument is still relevant today. Denmark's drive is a dynamic approach to education, research, and innovation. And therefore, our three must-win battles are the need to educate more, the need to have excellent research and better bridges between research and companies, and the need to increase our innovation capacity. Thank you very much.